Hi and welcome to the second Glam Workbench help video. Um, in the first video we looked at how you could visualize searches in Trove's digitized newspapers by using the latest version of a tool called Query Pick. Uh, in this second uh, video I'm going to build on that a bit so I'm going to look at how you can construct more complex searches to visualize using Query Pick and also how you can uh, adjust the time scale that Query Pick uses. Um, as you might remember, the uh, the way we get started uh, here is from the Glam Workbench, go to Trove and Trove Newspapers, uh, and then we find Query Pick, um, and we click on Run Live on Binder in Voila to get everything started. Now today I'm uh, I've got thing everything already going just to save a bit of time. So here is the the Query Pick notebook as it loads. Um, and I've already filled in my API key as well. So we can get stuck straight into trying out some searches. So I thought, thought the, the first search I would try would be something a little bit different um, using a, a search index which you might not know about. Um, first, seek. Ah, no, first, let me get it right. First page, seek. Okay. Uh, and let's just run that. What is this doing? So this uh, little parameter, this index here, um, actually limits your search to uh, articles which are published on that particular page of the newspaper. So what I've just said is that I want all articles published on page one of the newspaper. So that's a handy little thing to have in your sort of trove searching knapsack uh, if you want to limit your results to particular pages. Okay, but we're going to do a little bit more. Uh, as well as looking at uh, articles on page one, I want to limit it to articles that have photographs on page one. Uh, why might this be interesting? Uh, well, I mean, front pages haven't always been the way they are now, right? Um, uh, they didn't always have photographs on them, they didn't always have the headlines or the main stories. For a long time the front pages of newspapers just had classified ads. So you know, it would be quite interesting to see uh, if we can, by visualizing this query, look at how the content of front pages changed over time. So let's just grab this URL uh, and go into Query Pick paste it into the box as we did in the last video and I'm just going to hit visualize query. Um, so you might remember from last time what's happening now is that the uh, query pick tool is going off to Trove uh, and it's getting back data for each decade. So it's getting back the number of results for each year in each decade uh, and it's gluing all the information from the decades together and enabling us to visualize the results. So um, here we have the takeoff in the number of photographs on front pages. Um, now remember that too that the default view here is the raw number of results and that's why we're getting this dramatic drop off the copyright cliff of death in 1955. So it may be a bit more useful to switch over to a proportion of the total number of articles. So um, we can see here the proportion of articles on front pages which included photographs steadily increased after 1910. Which is pretty much what we'd expect. But it's quite interesting to see that we can actually trace those sorts of changes within the structure of newspapers themselves by constructing a query in Trove. Um, one other thing you might notice here, uh, there's a little blip down here uh, in 1860. Um, there's a couple of other little blips. What's going on there? That seems that seems remarkably early to have photographs on front pages of newspapers, doesn't it? Um, so remember that we can just click on any point on these charts to see what's going on. So we're on 1863 at the moment. If we click on that, it wrote it um, shows us the query in Trove, um, and we can see. The first result here, it is on the first page, so that's what we wanted, but it's not exactly a photograph, is it? It's, a, it's an engraving, a printed engraving. Um, and this is just a reminder that, uh, you know, we can't always believe or trust the metadata. 
um, that we're working with and more generally that you know as I've said in the previous video that these charts themselves are not arguments they're starting points they're ways to frame questions so that we can then dig in a bit further to see what's going on so we can't take these things at face value and that's really important when we're working with any of these digital tools okay so that's one uh, sort of slightly different type of query that we can look at which actually looks at the nature of newspapers themselves now I'm going to look at how we can adjust the time scale of our queries uh, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to I'm going to go into advanced search this time because we can use advanced search as well uh, query pick knows how to recognize advanced search parameters uh, and I'm going to I'm going to limit the results to the Australian Women's Weekly. Um, I'm also going to uh, set the article category to advertising. Uh, and I'm going to look for the word modern. Okay. Now I could uh, run this query as is. In fact, I will run this query as is. I could just take this query and paste it into query pick and that yeah, would be fine. But there's a little bit of an issue and that's because as I've said before the defaulting query pick is to go across the complete range of Trove right so from 1803 through to basically the present day but the Women's Weekly wasn't published in 1803 um, so you're going to have an awful lot of zeros in the chart before you get to the 1930s which is when the Women's Weekly started being published so it just makes it a less useful chart because the data that we want will all be squashed up and there'll be lots of zeros on either side one way we can avoid that is by actually changing the time scale of our search um, so we can just do that in advanced search now the the weekly started uh, in the 1930s so let's let's start our uh, query in the 1930s and it went th and on trove it's through until the 1980s so we'll go to the end of 1989 uh, as our search um, so we'll just run that now so let's set a time limit on our search right doesn't make any difference to the results in trove but it does make a difference when we try to visualize those results in query pick I'm just going to copy the URL again go back here I'm going to clear out what we just did and paste in the new query and then visualize the results so now you'll see instead of sort of getting 20 making 23 requests across the whole range of Trove it's only doing seven that's because we have limited that time span so there we go so you'll see here 1930 through to uh, the end of the 80s um, and so that's a, a much more useful chart uh, than it would be if we'd gone across the whole time scale um, and once again we can uh, you know look at that as a proportion of total articles this is the proportion of total articles uh, within the women's weekly so how many ads uh, including the word modern um, appeared compared to how many uh, total articles there were in the Women's Weekly uh, in that year. Um, and we can see a sort of interesting rise post-war up to the 19, uh, late 1950s. I um, mean, it might be interesting, you know, to, to compare other words that might appear in advertising here, like scientific or, or plastic or something like that. You know, some interesting possibilities there. Okay, so I basically just wanted to show how you could adjust the time scale of your query pick chart by simply setting uh, time limits within your Trove query. Um, now we're going to try uh, another example, um, and I'm going to, at this time, uh, I might switch to simple search. I'm going to search for the word Chinese. Um, and I'm going to use I'm going to use this little modifier here this, this uh, tilde zero which I discovered today uh, is one way of specifying that you don't want any fuzziness that you actually would just want an exact match on that word there are other ways to do that using you might have seen the like the full text colon um, and it does basically the same thing um, but this just seems a bit more compact um, so I'm going to search for that um, and when we get our results back I'm gonna I'm gonna now limit those to New South Wales okay let's just start with that query so 
Again, I'm not setting a time limit at this point. We're just going to run that as is just to see how it looks. Um, again, just clicking on visualize. Um, and again, this is going to go across the whole time span. Uh, and you might note uh, one interesting thing to note, one improvement in Query Pick is that it does cache results in the background so that if you're running queries again multiple times, you'll find that it's a lot faster. You're not having to go back to the API all the time. Okay, so we can see. Um, some interesting sort of peaks in mentions of, of Chinese, which is, uh, you might guess, to do with the restriction of entry of Chinese uh, people, mostly in, in 19th century New South Wales. Um, we could dig into this a bit deeper though, couldn't we? So look, there's something interesting happening between 1850 and 1870 here. Um, so we might want to go and, and, and set our time limits uh, back in Trove to look at that period. So again, we can just go into advanced search and we can set the time limits here. Um, 1850 uh, through to uh, the end of 1869. Oops. Okay, and we'll run that. Once again, I'll just grab that URL, take it back into Query Pick. Uh, we'll clear that out and run this one. Okay, now you might notice something a bit different about this one. Um, we're not aggregating uh, the results by year, we're actually aggregating them by month. So if you mouse over, you can see that the peak actually here is in March 1861. So what's happening here is that uh, Query Pick actually looks at the span of dates in your query uh, and it picks a, an appropriate time limit, a unit, based on that range. Um, you can see there's some guidelines up here so that it, if there's less than three months span in your query, it will aggregate information by day, between three months and 20 years, by month and more than 20 years by year. So we've got uh, just 20 years here or less than 20 years and so it's it's displaying the results aggregated by months. So this gives you more fine-grained information. Um, but it's possible for you to override this if this isn't what you want. So in this case if you actually did want to aggregate the results by year, uh, we can just um, remove the last query, we can change this from uh, automatic to year, visualize the results and we can get that by year. So it's same time span but different time unit. We're now looking at it uh, by year rather than by month. Um, and we can go back again. We could, we could choose month which is going to give us the same results as we had before. Oh, I made it to the chart. There you go. I didn't mean to do that um, but that's fine. Um, what we could do as well is go even, uh, look in even more fine grained detail. So if we go back to here, um, to our Trove search, we could, uh, let's, let's just use the facets in this case um, and choose uh, a particular year. So we'll choose 1858. Uh, and we'll even choose a month, March 1858. If I get that URL, uh, we'll clear everything out, um, set that back to automatic. Can you guess what it's going to do this time? Remember I set the facet to limit to a particular month. Um, and if you look at the automatic guidelines up here, less than three months, we should get results by day. Let's see if it worked. And we're nearly there. And we can see that if you look closely, um, we are indeed getting our results by day. Uh, so it's Tuesday the 2nd of March, Wednesday the 2nd of March, it's interesting to see the patterns by week, of course, there's no 
um, results on a Sunday, the newspapers. We have that interesting cycle, but we also have this sort of uh, significant peak over here in Saturday the 27th of March. Uh, once again, of course, we can switch to look at the proportion. Um, and we have those breaks because of the zeros. Again, we're seeing that significant... Oh, no, that's not actually. It's the Thursday, the 25th of March, where we're getting a peak there. So interesting comparison. So that's just an example of how you can start to work with different time scales and time units uh, using query pick. So you can, if you want, uh, zoom in and visualize your results by day, um, or you can zoom out uh, to look at them by month or by year, and you can control the total time span by just changing your search within Trove. So I hope that gives you some more ideas about how you can uh, visualize your results in Trove. Um, there's all sorts of possibilities, as we've seen, not just for looking at the occurrence of particular words, but looking at how newspapers themselves change. Um, and in a future video, I'm going to use Query Pick again, but this time I'm going to show you what it tells us about Trove itself. Um, but that's it for now. Thanks very much.